Let's get up this space station. So run orbit. Uh, this is at a 90 degree heading and 120 with three zeros after it. And hopefully this will all go well. It did not. Okay, okay, we are going to have to abort this. So Kerbalism struck. That happens. Um, it, this engine exploded. <laughs> As you can see, that's just a random thing that happens. But what we can do, can we roll this back or do we just recover? I think we can roll this back. Am I, am I crazy? I might not. I'm, I'm thinking uh, I might not be able to roll this back. I know in, if I recover, I think I have to rebuild this whole thing. Ah. Yeah, rollback's not an option. I'm thinking of RP1 where rolling back is an option. I don't think rollback is an option. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I go back to the Space Center if it is. Okay, so I can roll back, I'm being told. Okay, so let's, let's see. Oh, recover from with KCT. Okay, okay. So I might have done the wrong thing just there. Recover to the VAB. Yes, that might be it. I don't know. Never had this situation. So if I click on it, I don't think I should hit recover. So let's fly it again. Maybe shouldn't have left. And the thing is, what confuses me is that KCT works different in Realism Overhaul and RP1 than it does in the with the stock game, which is this one. That's what's confusing me. So if I do this, sorry, and go recover, no, because I don't think I have the option in the KCT menu, resume flight. There it is. See, there is no plan. There is no recover here. Close that. So I guess I'll just go to here. Oh, here we go. And go recover. I'm, I'm hoping recover to the VAB is the right thing to do. We'll see. Oh, the VAB had a recover button? Okay, so I'm maybe completely in the wrong spot. All right. Well, I've done what I've done. <laughs> so vessel recovery is happening. Let's warp to complete for that. Okay, so now if I go to here, I can edit this. I think this is going to work. Edit this. So here's our rocket. <laughs> it's a good looking rocket. So you can see there's no, so I think all I gotta do is just grab this and go two times. And now there's one on the other side. I think the thrust limiters should all be still good. I think so. Uh, see, that's a thrust limiter at 88.5 and that one's at, okay. Get away, stupid checklist thing. I don't know why it's way in the air like that, but I'm just going to save edits. I kind of actually, like, okay, it's only going to take 15 minutes to fix that. So that's okay. So, if, you know, the fact that I fumbled a little bit, but maybe this isn't such a big deal. Roll it out, take another two hours. And we're launching. There's not much lost there. Not much lost. Again, nobody aboard. Get out. Get out. Launch. Not much. When I when I do edited videos, of course, I, I cut all those loading times out. It still is up in the air. I hate that. Oh, well. I don't know why I put it in the air. Okay. Anyway, run. Run orbit. Uh, 100. Nope, nope, nope. 90 and 120,000 go all right let's do it all right all right so we are off this made it to orbit in simulation mode and nobody aboard <laughs> oh I noticed when I was looking at it in the VAB after I placed the engines at the uh, 
launch TWR is a little higher, but that's because there aren't two Kerbals aboard. So it's uh, it's accelerating a little bit more quickly. Did before? Did the tanks get refilled? Oh! Oh, I didn't even consider that. There were engines that fired, weren't there? Oh! I saw the option to refill the tanks, and I just I didn't go for it. Probably not. <laughs> That's right, it burnt a little bit of fuel, didn't it? Hopefully it, well, it isn't too bad. We are uh, less Kerbals. Uh, the weight of the Kerbals are gone, so maybe maybe that little bit of fuel won't turn into such a big deal. Yeah, you're right, I should have said refill the tanks, and I just didn't do it. Report, yeah. So many things to think about. Okay, about to lose these uh, radio boosters. Whoa, okay. I know what happened there. <laughs> I know what happened there because the one end... No, that still doesn't make sense. But that must have to do with the fact that the engine was gone. Like, those, the, the, the fuel must have been asymmetric. I don't know why that should have happened, but... <laughs> Obviously something to do with that launch fail. Either way, we got away with it. We got away with it. That's what's important. And although I'm going due east, I'm going to end up in about an orbit with about an inclination of 28 degrees because we are launching from Cape Canaveral, which is at a latitude of 28 degrees. So this will be an inclined orbit. And... Uh, Whoops, let's take this off. So we're, you can see already how it's being inclined downwards. Let's take the target circle off. That's just being pessimistic. So that means when we go to launch our orbiter, we'll have to make sure to launch at the right windows as, it's, as, uh, as we come under that orbit. That means you only got, yeah, one launch window a day. That's okay. Yeah, one of them definitely had more fuel in it than the other. That was sort of funny. Oh, there goes fairings again. Oh, am I going to lose the nose cone? Nope, nope, nope. It's pinned up there. It wants to fall off. See, if I was flying this manually, this would be the point where I'd give it a little bit of a wiggle. Just to shake loose that nose cone. I think we're going to be fine. Can I give it a wiggle now? No, it won't let me. It doesn't give me any control. Ah, that's true. With the fuel lines. So, yes, the tanks that were on the side. That's very good, Natalie, that you noted. The tank that was on the side with the active engine was draining twice as fast as the tank that was on the side without the active engine. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Okay, we're going again for a target of 120 kilometers. So always find a nice, a nice altitude for uh, space stations in the stock game lets you to come gives you plenty of room below it in order for you to be you know do rendezvous and set up getting getting up to the station but it's also not high enough that you have to worry about getting into the radiation belts so it works well I did not forget to jettison the nose cone. The nose cone has been jettisoned. It's just pinned there. <laughs> as soon as we cut our thrust, this, this nose cone will drift away. Uh, normally, I put a separatron under the nose cone to kind of blast it away, but I don't have separatrons unlocked yet. Lots of things I don't have unlocked yet. Okay. The game thinks we're in an orbit. Not quite, but just did the camera funky thing. So 
it's going to be a very tiny burn to do the final circularization. And there, we just cut our throttle. Let's get up into space. There goes our nose cone. Bye-bye, nose cone. Hopefully, we won't run into you again. I'm worried as well that the periapsis is not high enough for the game to auto-delete that thing. So I might have to actually delete it manually, which is annoying. Oh, we can put our lights on. Lights on. Going into space, reorienting itself for that maneuver. Just again, a 45 meter per second burn. We still have 496 meters per second. So our little bit of the little fuel fiasco there at the beginning isn't a big deal. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why did you turn on engine? Engine, why? Why'd you do that? Bad engine. I went to uh, cut throttle and, or close that program off and for some stupid reason that engine turned on so I'm just gonna do a little bit prograde here get that apoapsis up to 120 it actually lost a bit because of uh, what's the word I'm because of atmospheric drag anyway I don't know why I closed the KOS window anyway. Why'd I do that? Same with why aren't I time warping like this way? Tiny little burn here to finish this off, and then we're in an orbit, and we'll line up our solar panels and stuff, and then, uh, yeah, I think I think that's going to be it. So next week, we'll end up building a little, a brand new orbiter, because I don't have an orbiter with a docking port, and I don't even have an orbiter that can hold more than one Kerbal. So I do have the two-person, what is that one? The onion that comes next, I think? I think so. Throttle here. That's good enough, I think. Close that. And I do have a script here for lining up the solar panels. We'll see how good a job it does. It should take into account the inclination of our orbit and everything and put them in a nice, yeah, it's not too terrible looking. Let's see, delete that. Let's get this into the sun and see what it looks like. Oh, and then of course it drifts. Oh, it's going to do that though, isn't it? Nope, nope, nope. That's good. No, I think that's a nice orientation there for the solar panels. Looks good. Whoa, I pushed the wrong button. <laughs> All right, so I think what I'm going to do is leave this up here in the orbit. I'm going to leave this little tug on here uh, because it does have some fuel in it. Might find something useful to do with that fuel. But uh, I think our next job is to build ourselves a little orbiter, come in here, dock with it, get our Kerbals in here, and start working on that, uh, be in orbit for 30 days, 